So here we are at the end of our mix and I'm on the master output and you would navigate to that just by going to the mixer and the master's right at the end here. Once you're there, you can double click it and you can see I've already started to add uh, some basic devices here. I've got the EQ5 and I'm just adding some targeted low end and I might add a little bit of high end as well just to sweeten things. And there's some light compression going on here as well, just with easy attack and easy release. Just nice and simple, just a couple of dB of compression, just adding that bus compression, bit of cohesion to the mix. The final thing I want to do is add some perceived volume. Now we all know that you're not meant to go too far here and you're not meant to add uh, too much volume and reduce your dynamics too much, but everybody likes to make sure that it's as loud as it can be uh, before you start to crush it to death. The best way to do that is with a limiter. Now there's a dedicated peak limiter in here. By default, it's loaded up at minus 0.30 dB. That's to ensure there's no clipping. So really, that's a good point to start with. There's no real reason to change from that unless you've got a specific level in mind or a specific level that a client requires or that uh, the source requires, the destination requires, sorry. But once you've got that ceiling in place, you can start to add some gain and you'll see the gain reduction occur here. Now, these are your peak levels, the smaller ones, and your RMS is down the bottom. Now you want to watch that there's still life in that peak level. And in fact, I'm going to bring this down to minus 0.4. And the difference with it with and without it. You can hear that extra volume, that extra compression, and uh, it definitely sounds a lot louder. It's a really, really simple plugin. And remember, you can always save your work. There's actually no presets here. That's purely because it's so simple. But if you wanted to save it as master one, you could go ahead and do that. And once you're done, just hit OK, and that's recallable any time. And now we're ready to export our track. Now to do that, you want to go to File, and then Export Audio, and you've got a few options really. You can select individual tracks here, so if you wanted to just export specific things, you could do. But if you scroll right down, in fact we can just open this up a bit, that's better you can see master is selected at the bottom. If you've got your master channel selected, you really don't need to worry too much because everything's going to export. If you want to export individual tracks, you're going to want to turn master off and then select your following files. So we're going to keep master done and we're going to dither it down to 16 bit. That's great. And I'm going to put it onto my desktop. Let's call it 720 export. and we're good to go. So it's going to do it really, really quickly. You're not going to hear it, but you can see it doing it in super fast time. So while it's doing that, I'll say thanks very much for watching. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed exploring the processes in Bitwig with me. And obviously, I hope you enjoy exploring them yourself even more. If you want to find out more about the synthesizers and MIDI, make sure you watch my Synth and MIDI Bitwig course. And I'll see you in the future for more advanced Bitwig courses and videos. But until then, bye for now.